Today we're talking about polar coordinates. Okay, you guys had your introduction on Friday to uh, what polar coordinate is and how to basically find, go from a Cartesian coordinates, which are your normal x, y, to polar. Um, and so we're going to go a little bit more into that. We're actually going to graph these polar coordinates now, as well as some uh, simple and more complex equations on polar grids, both by hand and by calculator. All right, so we will need a calculator today. Give you guys a minute to grab that, and then we'll get started. All right, so in, pol in a polar coordinate system, okay, it's different from your Cartesian, your rectangular coordinate system with your x's and y's. You have a fixed point at the origin, but it's, it's not, it's basically called a pole, which you see right here in this picture. Now, the polar axis is that initial ray from the pole, usually in the horizontal direction towards the right. Okay, just like your initial style when we're talking about the inner circle in our angles, right? Now the actual polar coordinate T, which is written as R comma theta, okay, that, that's what makes it polar versus a rectangular, okay, normal x, y, where R is the directed distance from the pole to the point, so there's R, and theta is the directed angle from the polar axis to the actual ray, OP. Everybody see that in the picture? Okay. Now to graph a polar coordinate, to graph that point, you have to remember that basically for the angle, if you're going in the counterclockwise direction, it's a positive value, just like with your unit circle. And if it goes in the clockwise direction, it is a negative angle. Okay, so same rules apply as before with the unit circle, okay? And the, the point, the actual point itself, lies on the terminal side of that angle, okay? So you always want to graph your angle first. And then R, R is going to be positive if it lies on the terminal side, okay? So this right here is basically letting you know that R is positive for this particular point. However, if R is negative, it lies on the ray opposite of the terminal side. And by that, basically, here's your terminal side that you see right here in the blue. The opposite ray would basically be a continuation of that ray in the opposite direction and then the point would lie on that extension, all right? Now there is an example on the next slide so you guys can kind of have a better visual of it. So you can see exactly what, what I'm referring to. All right, so polar coordinates are made up of an R, which is the distance from the pole, um, and then along that, uh, that terminal side, and then theta, which is the angle going either clockwise or counterclockwise from the polar axis. So here are a few that you see. You have the point A, which is at 245 degrees. We go 45 degrees in a counterclockwise direction and then two units along your terminal side. Does everybody see that? Here, you do, always do your angle first. You go two pi over three radians to get your terminal side. But since R is negative, you extend that terminal side and then you plot your point on that extension on the opposite ray. That's how you graph negative R values. Does everybody see that? So you still go the same uh, distance in that kind of plot, plot direction, but you just extend that terminal side to graph it. The last one over here shows you an example of a negative angle. Remember, if the angle is negative, it's going in the clockwise direction, so you're going down negative 30 degrees and still three units along your terminal side. Questions? So always do your angle first, go that degree, and if you need to, until you get comfortable, draw that terminal side, and then you'll be able to plot, um, plot your arm. Now all polar coordinates are plotted on a polar grid, and it basically kind of looks like a unit circle with the multiple rings, okay? Yeah, or like globe, yeah. And each ring represents your R value. Okay, so as you see in these two pictures, you got one, two, three, four, five. The first ring is the closest to your pole, and it, you know, you count out. So for this point P, it is three, four pi over three. Well, you graph the angle, four pi over three is going in the counterclockwise direction. So there's your terminal side. Does everybody see that? And then three would be on the third ring from the pole. So that's one, two, three. And 
and there's point P. That's see how it works? Do your angle first, and until you kind of get the hang of it, you can draw your terminal side, and if it's positive, it lies on the terminal side on the third ring. This other one over here is an example of when R is negative. So the angle is 150 degrees, so you go counterclockwise 150 degrees. There's your terminal side. So since R is negative, you extend that terminal side, and then you go 3.5, so halfway between the third ring and the fourth ring, in the negative direction. So that would be 1, 2, 3, and then there's 3.5. Does everybody see how the negative R's work? Okay. So what we're going to do now is I want you guys to give a, a try a few. It's going to be on a separate sheet of paper. Okay? So I'm going to leave this up so you kind of use this to help you grab these, uh, these next six. All right, so let's take a look. Number one, you're at 2.50 degrees, so your theta is zero degrees. You always start on that horizontal axis, so zero degrees means you're not going anywhere. You're right there on that horizontal axis, and you're going over 2.5 uh, rings. So here's one ring, two ring, 2.5 is in between 2 and 3, so there was A. Did you guys have that for A? Awesome. Now B is 3, negative 135. You always do your angle first, and then you count your rings for your R. So negative 135 degrees, is that heading clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Okay, so you usually know a little bit of inductive degrees, but if I'm heading clockwise, I've got 90 degrees here, so then one, a negative 135 would be in between what value? In between this uh, 210 and 240, or negative 120 and negative 150. It's halfway in between, so you're probably looking right along here. Okay? So that's a negative 135 degrees. So along that terminal side, you're going to be at the third ring. So that's one, two, three. Here's where B was located. You guys have that? Remember, if it's positive, it's located on that terminal side. And you don't necessarily have to draw the terminal side like I just did here. You can just actually draw just where the point is, but if you did draw it, I'm not going to count you off for it. Now, negative 1, negative 30. What uh, value on this uh, polar, cor uh, polar grid does negative 30 degrees correspond with? Say again? 330. So we're right here along this terminal side. So there's negative 30 degrees. But negative 1. Is that going to be on your terminal side? No, it's going to be on the opposite ray that's heading in the other direction. And you're going to be one ring on that one. I mean, if I just show it so to kind of distinguish between the terminal side and then the, the opposite ray. I always got it. But I mean, if you did a solid, that's fine. Honestly, I'm going to be looking, where's the point? That's really what I'm looking for. Okay? Questions? Let's look at number two. This time we're just in radians. Where is pi over four? What uh, two radians is that located between? Pi over six, pi over three. So it's right here. Here's pi over four. Where would negative two? Where would I put the negative two? On the opposite side, and which ring? That's right there on that second ring. So there's A. Is everybody with me? Now we have for B, we have a 1 and then 5 pi over 4. Where's 5 pi over 4? In between 7 pi over 6 and 4 pi over 3. So basically right here where the, the dotted line was. Okay? So for B, I'm changing colors. Hopefully that won't throw anybody off. Okay? You're at the terminal side for B. 5 pi over 4. And R is a positive 1, so you're going to be located on that terminal side right at that first ring. So there's B. Okay, we 
go in that counterclockwise direction to get the angle, and then we go the number of rings along that uh, terminal side. So far, so good. And now the last one, 1, negative 2 pi over 3. Where is negative 2 pi over 3? What value does that correspond with? 5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3? 4 pi over 3. So it's going to be right here. And if I'm at a positive 1, that is going to be on my terminal side, basically right beside coordinate B. Right there. All right? Now all these extra terminal sides, you can draw them if you like, but you don't have to necessarily to grab these points, okay? They're just there as guides. Questions? Now, if n is any integer, okay? And is any integer, what's an integer mean? A positive whole number? Or a negative whole number? Is zero an integer? Yes, it is. Okay, so any whole number, positive or negative. So if n is any integer, the point with the polar coordinate r theta can also be represented by a polar coordinate in those two forms that you guys see up on the board. Okay? Those are like formulas for degrees. And of course, if theta is a gradient, you know, it's going to be just a, a little bit different. Okay, so I'll give you guys a second to write that down. So these are like set formulas to basically find <coughs> uh, a polar coordinate for any point that's in a polar grid. Okay, now if theta was in radians, if all your values were in radians, then this 360 n would turn into what? 2 pi n, and this one 80 would turn into what? Pi if you ran radio, okay? So it still works just to, you know, depending on if it's uh, degrees or radius. And basically what this is telling us is that if you have a point given to you on a coordinate grid, there are different ways you can actually represent that polar coordinate. You have you can have a value for A, two different values for R, and you can have different values for theta based off of these rules up here, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to find four different pairs of polar coordinates that name point T. And we're going to have a restriction for theta. Theta can only be from negative 360 degrees to a positive 360 degrees. Okay? And honestly, guys, it's not that challenging. I'm going to show you how you can use the formula. But after we find every one, I'm going to show you how you can just also just look at the graph and pull these out. Okay? So these are different ways to represent polar coordinates. So looking here, my first value is R. R is the number of rings along my polar grid. What's the value of R? It's four. First ring closest to the pole is one, two, three, four. So we know that R is four. And what degree is T located at? 135. This is one way to represent that polar coordinate for T. And there are two, there are three other ways that we're also going to pull out as well. And then, but first, does everybody see where that four came from in that 135? Okay, because I mean, usually that's the easiest way. You just count the rings and you start from your, uh, that horizontal axis, also known as your polar axis, and go in the uh, counterclockwise direction. So this first one, and I didn't catch this before, can you guys change this plus to a comma? There should be a comma right there. So change that to a comma because this actually represents a point. <laughs> so you can use these formulas here to figure out other ways to write cord, uh, polar coordinate T. The first one, you keep the same R. So what was R again? Four. And then you can take theta and add 360 N. Now N represents any integer. So what's the integer that we can plug in for N? You can plug in one. Okay? So if I plug in one, I basically have 360 plus theta. And theta in this uh, example is going to be 135. That's what you guys got the first time. Now, what's 135 plus 360? 495. 495. Is 495 in the, in 
the, the interval? No, it's not. So we can't, you can't use n. You can't use one, I mean. What's another integer you think we can use? Negative one. If we plug in negative one, that becomes 135 minus 360. What's 135 minus 360? What is it? Negative 225. Does that lie in the interval? So another way to represent coordinate T is by saying 4, negative 225 degrees. And if you think about it, guys, negative 225 just means I'm starting at the polar axis, which again is the horizontal axis, and going which direction? Clockwise. So if you go 225 degrees clockwise, you will actually be at that value. Does everybody see that? Just went in the opposite direction. Now, could I use this formula anymore to get any other possible coordinates for t? Could I plug in negative 2? Would negative 2 work? Why not? Be outside of restriction. So I can't use this formula anymore, but I could use this one. The second one says, okay, we have negative r, so that would be what? Negative 4. And then I have 2n plus 1 times 1 8. What value could we plug in for n? 1. Okay? If I plug in 1, what's 2 times 1? Plus 1. So I have 3 times 1 8. What's 3 times 1 8? 3 times 1. I mean, everybody's a calculator center right from me. Okay. 540. 135 plus 540. Is that in outside of our restriction? No. So we can't use one. What's another value you can use though? Negative one. What's two times negative one plus one? What's negative one times 180? What's 135 minus 180? Negative 45. Is that inside of our restriction? Yes. So that's another way you could uh, represent coordinate t. If you don't want to use the formula, take a look at the graph. Think about it. Negative 45 degrees would be right here. Okay, going clockwise to that value. If r is negative, we're on the opposite side of that terminal side. And that's exactly where t is located. Okay? So that's where that even comes from. I need one more. I'm going to do four different pairs. I can use negative r again. But what value could I plug in for n? Take a plug in negative 2? You can plug in 0. What's 2 times 0 plus 1? Times 180. What's 135 plus 180? 315. 315. That is inside our, of our restriction, and that is the fourth way to represent coordinate t as a polar coordinate. So realize it's not just one set answer to represent a polar coordinate. However, I would always opt for, you know, option one. It's the easiest one, and it's right there in your face, okay? But, you know, I don't want you to be caught off guard if, you know, a question says, you know, I give you four options that says which one of these is not an accurate way to represent a polar coordinate. You need to be able to recognize that, hey, you know, it has to be within a certain, a certain range, a certain interval here, okay? So look back at that paper, that second handout. Look on the back side. I want you guys to do number seven and number eight. Similar to this, you're finding four different pairs of coordinates that represents the point uh, I believe it's point A, and use these restrictions right here for uh, example seven and eight. Give you a few minutes to try those. So for number seven, we're representing A four different ways. One person raise hand. Give me one way. Aiden. Two point five. And then 135 degrees, because yes, since A is floating in between the second and third ring, that is a 2.5 for R. And then of course, it's halfway between 120 and 150, so it's 135. And if you should notice, 
the angle is the same as the, as the one from the note. So it should have been pretty simple for this one. So what, uh, give me another one for positive 2.5. What was the other one? Negative 225. Negative 225. If I use the negative 2.5, negative 45 degrees. And if I used another negative 2.5, it would have been 315. Okay? And you guys just remember, so like for the last one, 315 degrees would be right in this area. But since it's a negative 4, you're going in the opposite direction. Somebody give me a, a value for number for, uh, for 8. 3 and 240 degrees. Okay, so right down that 241, going counterclockwise. What about if we still have a positive R? We could also say what? Negative 120. That's heading clockwise, negative 120 degrees. What's another one? Negative 3 what? 60. Okay, here's 60 right here. But since it's a negative 3, you have to head on the opposite direction. And what's the last one? Good stuff. Yes? Could you use, like if you already found the negative one, could you use the easier one? What's the easier thing? The first um, whole zero, could you go to the next one? Yes, you could actually, but like, once you find one for the negative uh, R value, once you find a theta there, you could have used the first formula and just did a plus 360 or minus 360 to get it. Yeah. Questions on naming coordinates or plotting them? Okay. <clears throat> Graphing linear, uh, polar equations. All right, an expression expressed in terms of a polar coordinate is called a polar equation. A polar graph is a set of all points with the coordinates R theta. Uh, that satisfy the given equation, okay? So if you think, about, uh, think back to your regular rectangular Cartesian plane, every single point was an x, y, right? You know, if we had an equation, we used to make a table, plug in points for x, get our y's and plot those points, right? Cor uh, polar coordinates are very similar, <coughs> except this time you have an r and a theta. So if you're given the equation of r equals 2, that means that whatever points you know, you pick or you create. No matter what, R is always going to be 2. Theta can be any possible value. It could be pi over 2. It could be pi over 6. It could be 3 pi over 4. So on and so forth. Okay? But no matter what, R is always going to be the same because in the equation, R equals 2. So if I were to just plot those first few points that I, that I have right there, that's 2 pi over 2. 2 pi over 6, 2, 3 pi over 4, and I could have kept going. I could have said 2 pi. I could have said 2, 3 pi over 2. I could have said any value as long as r was 2. And what do you notice? What kind of a picture is being formed here? A circle. So you basically just create a circle, and that is what this particular equation looks like. Because it doesn't matter what theta is, no matter what, r is 2. And if you remember anything about, about circles back in your geometry days, what did the r represent? Radius. radius. Isn't this a circle with a radius of 2? There you go. B is very similar. Except this time, instead of r being the same, what's the same? The theta. Theta is going to be pi over 2. No matter, uh, not pi over 2, I'm sorry. 2 pi over 3, no matter what. r could be any value, though. r could be 3, negative 2, a positive uh, 4. It could be any value. And when you plot those, let's see, 3, 2 pi over 3, negative 2, 2 pi over 3, 4, 2 pi over 3. What do you think is going to form? A straight line. And these are your two 
graphs. These are your most basic ones. We'll look at some more complex ones in just a second. But when r equals 2, you're going to have a circle. Uh, when theta equals a value, you're going to have a straight line. Okay? Every time. Because r is always going to stay the same, which means it's going to continue to go around and around and around. And then for uh, b, the angle is always going to be 2 power 3, so no matter what, you're always going that far. Look at the last two, the bottom two on that, uh, that extra handout I gave you. I want you guys to do those. Alright, so for this one, what did it look like? Around the three. Around the three on the three ring. Okay, now if you ever happen to end up with one that's like 2.5 or 1.5, uh, you know, kind of use some points to guide you, but it should definitely look like a circle, not an oval or a square. Okay, <laughs> so do your best. What about this one? What did it look like? A line, straight line uh, coming on the 60 in both directions? Yes. Simple enough, right? Okay. Questions up to here.